Good evening. Hello everyone. Pop your hands up. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to picture yourself in a large open field. Hi, I'm back. Please can you share this for me and get it out there. Share with as many people as you think would be beneficial to. Uh, I'm trying to get the spiritual message sent out there and to get spirit seen on such a deeper, more beautiful level and how amazing this kind of work actually is and how it works in every aspect of our lives as well. So please help me with this. Share away if you feel the need. I would be greatly appreciative of it. And if you are sharing, I'm going to be giving you something in return. So we are going to be announcing a winner. So I'm just going to choose somebody that has shared and you're going to win a prize, okay, by the end of this live stream. So my darlings, on with the journey. So on the last live stream, which was Friday, I was talking about how Mr. H was literally everything. He was great. He was wonderful. We lived together. We were partying. We were working. And life was very much about me just being a drunk psychic. That was it. So I'd only really let my gift out when I was drunk. And it was because I had no filter. So and I was relaxed and I wasn't as fearful and almost like you know how people say the truth comes out when you're drunk that was very much me because as soon as I was drunk I literally felt as if I could be myself and I could just share and that the judgment kind of wouldn't have been there as much but even then I'd still share but I'd run away at the same time so this went on for a number a number of years I should have been known really as the Birmingham girl that ran around doing readings in nightclubs. That's what I should have been known for. So it went on like that, but I felt as if I was living a very normal life. And because of that, I think these were kind of my flourishing years. Me and Mr. H lived together in a little one bedroomed apartment. We loved it. And life was really good. We both had good jobs and we drove little cars and you know, we just were out partying. We, we lived a really good life. And then my granddad, who is literally the best person ever, he became very unwell and he started to get really ill. And we knew it wasn't going to be long before he passed over. And then I got a phone call from my mum saying, you need to come and see him. I was like, I'm coming, I'm coming. Because she said she'll call me the minute it was about to happen. He was about to cross. So I knew. Got in the car, drove down and I felt really ill, like not because he was crossing, that's a horrible thing to say, because he had a great life. So almost like when I saw him, it was more almost a celebration of life. But I just felt ill. I felt really rough. Anyway, so I drove to see my granddad. And when I got there, he died. He passed. And I just remember looking at him going, oh, I couldn't hang on five more minutes. Seriously? <laughs> Which I laugh now, but because he would have laughed at that. But I was like, oh. And I remember seeing his body and... If anyone's ever seen anyone that's crossed over, I think I've talked about this a lot, but if you're new to me and you don't know who I am, by the way, my name's Katie Helliwell. I'm a psychic medium and a spiritual business, business mentor. I also run my own psychic school for gifted souls to help them develop. Anyway, saw my granddad and he was lying there and I was just like, oh, this is just not, this is horrible. But when I saw his body, he was so peaceful and all of his skin, he had these little like liver spots, you know, when people grow old, they get liver spots and on their hands as well. And you know, when you're older, you get like wrinkly hands and things. And he looks so smooth and so peaceful and so beautiful. It was amazing. And I was mesmerized. I wasn't upset. I was just mesmerized. And I was staring at his body for what felt like a lifetime. And people coming in going, are you okay? You don't seem as if you've let out your emotion. And I was like, no, I'm fine. And I was going, look how beautiful he looks. I said, his hands always look that young. Did he? I was like, what hand cream was granddad using? Like these were the most serious questions. And everyone was like, oh, she's in shock. She's in shock. And I probably was in shock. But equally, I was like, what hand cream is he using? What face cream did granddad have towards the end of his life? He looks amazing. He looks about 50 lying there. And he was 80 something. And uh, anyway, so just staring at his body, staring. And I couldn't stop. But then I couldn't feel sad. And everyone was like, you, you've got to let this emotion out. You've got to grieve. And I said, yeah, but he's not in there. That's not granddad. That, he's not there. And they're all like, he is. He's there. He's there. You know, you connect and let it out. I was like, but he's not there. He's gone. He's gone. Like the body was just a shell. 
It was so bizarre. And I don't know whether I was looking at it from a psychic angle and spiritually because everyone else couldn't let go and everyone else was holding onto his hand and everything else. It was, you know, quite sad to watch that. But for me, he was gone. He was, he was gone. That, he, that body was not him. It was just a shell and a very beautiful version. So it was a real surreal experience. And I sat there thinking, wow, that's weird. And so now I drove home. Well, I drove to my mum and dad's house because I felt so ill, I felt so sick. And I was like, oh, I feel really ill, mum. I said, can I just come back to yours? And she's like, yeah, yeah, come back to ours. So I was living with Mr H then. So I drove back to my mum's house, got in mum and dad's bed <laughs> at 21, got in mum and dad's bed and went to sleep for hours, hours and hours. And then mum said, are you sure you're okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to drive home now. And I said, I must be coming down with something. I got home, Mr H said, oh, it's just because, you know, you're grieving. This is what grief does to you. And I was like, yeah, I said, I just feel really weird, really off. And he's like, well, go to bed, get some sleep, see how you feel. So I went to sleep, got up the next morning, felt worse. So I phoned in sick to work and then I did a pregnancy test. Don't ask me why. But I was literally like, granddad, what's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? And I was like, what do I need to do? And then I just felt this urge. I didn't hear him or see him. But I felt this urge to go and get a pregnancy test. I have no idea why I had a spare pregnancy test in the apartment, but I did. I had a spare one. And I went and did a test. And we weren't trying for a baby. Good God, we were so far from parenthood and any of that kind of life. That was not on our agenda. Like, it would totally interfere with clubbing and everything else and our jobs. We were both quite career-minded. I decided I was going to be a tycoon of the banking industry. And Mr H had decided the same. So... But little did I know, spirit had a different way for me because as I was saying to you on Friday, I just couldn't handle all of the all of the, the pressure and the energy of the, the office. It was just too much at the time, everyone's emotions. It was a lot to take in. So I went and did the pregnancy test and it was positive. So I remember looking at this pregnancy test and thinking, oh my gosh, what the actual hell am I gonna do? Where am I gonna put a baby? You can't swing a cat in here. Oh, my life, my job, my life's over, I can't drink, I can't party, on oh, my high heels. <laughs> like, that's like really stupid, I know. But And I remember sitting there holding the stick like this and I couldn't quite see the line, I had to put it down. Phone Mr H and I said, I'm pregnant. And he was like, you what? I thought you said you felt ill. And I was like, I'm pregnant. He's like, you're not pregnant. I was like, I am, I am, I'm pregnant. And uh, he was like, so... And Mr. H was like, yeah, he said, you, you're not. It's just because, you know, you felt ill, you're not pregnant. So like, okay then. So I went to work and I thought, well, there's nothing wrong with me, I'll go to work. So I went to work and sat there in my office staring, sat down at my desk really late and just stared at a blank screen. I thought I turned it on and I was just like this. And my, <laughs> my manager came over and pulled me into a room. She's like, is everything okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine, why? She says, well, your, your granddad's just passed and now we've just found you staring at the computer screen that's not on. I was like, oh, it's not on. Oh, okay. And she went, you need to go home. And I was like, no, no, I'm fine. And she's like, is, it, is everything, do you want to talk about grief and that? And I went, yeah, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I just told her straight out as if you do that. I haven't even told my family. She's like, you what? I was like, yeah, I went on one, of, I peed on one of those sticks. I actually said these words and I said, got it with me if you want to see it and she went no 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 she said I believe you <laughs> bear in mind I was only like 21 and she said uh and she went okay and are you okay about it I said I don't know I don't think I am pregnant I don't know and she's like you need to go home and you need to phone the doctor so I did all that I went home phoned the doctor and they all confirmed it so I saw my baby Jess who's now 18 as my as literally my gift from my granddad it really she really was a gift and during her birth, her birth is the reason why I'm here now and why I'm here with you all and how life has a funny way of working out for you. So obviously my career in the banking industry was kind of just faulted and wasn't going to happen because I knew I was going to be a different type of mom. You know, I think everyone's got their way of bringing up their children and how they want to be. And I was kind of one of those people that just couldn't be away from her, just couldn't be away from her at all. It killed me to work. I hated it, absolutely hated it. So anyway, when she was, let me just get to this pivotal point here and then I promise I'll give you some guidance. So if anyone needs any guidance in their businesses or with their jobs, just, you know, put some questions on here and I can see if I can help you. But when 
like so Jessica's birth so pregnancy oh, that's for another day went through the pregnancy that was difficult in itself they kept saying I had a low 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 I didn't know what that meant but they just said oh you're fine don't worry about it you know it's okay we'll keep monitoring you so I had loads of scans and they confirmed everything was okay anyway so it came to the birth and she was born on Christmas day so there was little staff on they're all on call so there was skeletal staff all around the hospital everyone kept singing there was carol singers I was giving birth and saw these carol singers everywhere I was like I literally wanted to hit one of them and I'm not aggressive at all but I was like oh, one more person sings holy night to me or jingle bells this could be the end <laughs> I was like I can't go so I sat there um yeah so I sat there like in the birthing suite and everything was going well and then all of a sudden everything took a turn for the worst like when I say took a turn for the worst it was awful I was hemorrhaging blood like there was no tomorrow everyone had been paged in there was a room full of 20 plus doctors it was awful and then they calmed everything down so that I started bleeding that was the problem the placenta was coming before the baby and obviously that's dangerous for both mother and baby anyway so the doctors left and they calmed everything down it took hours but they got all the sutures or whatever it is they do to mop your blood up did all of that and they said right just relax now we're going to put some you know oxytocin in for the uh, contractions on a drip and then we're going to see how you go so I was like okay but they went and I was waiting for this drip to come and all of a sudden I heard all these voices and I was like oh what's all these voices like whispering and noise and I was like hmm? it was just me and my mom in the room and I turned to the side and on the windowsill because it was all windows in the delivery suite <clears throat> it's an oldish hospital I was born there and then all of the along the windowsill was all these people and I was like where did all those people come and I thought oh my god they're doing a hospital tour because you could sign up for the you know the tours of the suites and I was like oh my god they're bringing a hospital tour in here I can't believe they're doing that and I was thinking oh my god those poor women will never have a baby they'll be te absolutely petrified and terrified after seeing me because there was just blood all over the floor still they wait for people to come and clear it up it looked like a massacre in there and it was just awful. And I was like, mom, mom. And my mom was like going to sleep on the bed. And she said, what, what, what's wrong? Are you feeling okay? And I said, there's all these people over there. I said, can't they move the, the hospital tour? Seriously. And then I looked and she's like, what are you on about? There's no one there. And there was all of the, like, there was builders, there was nuns, there was people just in different clothes. It was really, really bizarre. And I went, mom, there's spirits then. And my mum went, oh my God, don't look at them. And she literally, I've never seen a panic so much in all my life. And I was like, why? Why can't I look at them? She went, don't look at them. Turn away. Look at the door. Is there any over there by the door? I said, no, they're on the windowsill. She's like, turn and look at the door. Turn and look at the door. You're not going to them. Tell them to go away. You're not going. And she kept like chanting it. And then she was watching all my stats from the ops. And she was like, oh, and she doesn't know what they mean. But she's going, you feel okay? You feel okay? And I was like, well, yeah, apart from you, like, scaring me and telling me to look at a door. Yeah, I'm all right. And I was, like, looking at the door. And she said, it could be the drugs. And I said, what drugs? I hadn't had any. And, um, well, I think I hadn't had any. I don't know. And then she said, it could be you've lost so much blood. You're hallucinating. And I thought, well, yeah, that makes sense. I thought, it could be hallucinating, yeah. So I was like, okay. And then it went worse. As soon as that happened, it just went worse. And there was just more blood, more people, paged. Everyone was crying. People, family members walking in and out to take over. It was horrific. As your first birth, I can't believe I had two more. It was horrific. And then they threw, they literally got Jessica, got her out and threw her onto me. You know, none of this, oh, here's your baby, it's a girl. Didn't even know what, you know, she was. They literally threw her so that they could repair and get everything in there. So I was like, a quarter, and she was all slippy, and then the midwife gave me a, a towel and stuff to wrap her in. But... I was like absolutely useless. I lost so much blood. I was like terrible. I was going, somebody else hold her. I can't hold this baby. She's too heavy. She was seven pound, bless her. And I was like, oh, it was awful, really bad. But the purpose of me telling you that is obviously we're both well. We were, you know, after a few days in intensive care and a few uh, few drips and blood transfusions, I was fine then, fit as a flu. But the reason I'm telling you this is because the spirits were all there because my mom thought they'd come to collect me. So when you cross over, spirits often come to meet you so no one dies alone no one crosses over alone so if anyone's had anyone in covid you know when you couldn't go to the hospital and they were on their own you thought oh my god they've passed on their own that's so sad they would never no one ever dies on their own everyone always gets looked after and always met 
So my mom knew this because she's psychic herself, I won't admit it. And she was like, do not look at them. So she thought they'd come to collect. However, they would come to protect. So I remember sitting there when I was well, like months later, and saying to Mr. H, they've come to look after me. That's, that's a massive thing. They actually came to look after me. And he was like, yeah, well, I think you were hallucinating. I was like, I wasn't hallucinating, I wasn't. And then my granddad came to visit Jess. So I was changing her nappy one night and she started babbling and chatting. And then I was like, who's she babbling and chatting to? It's just me and her in the house. My mum was on her way around. And I felt these hands, big, my granddad, really big hands, literally holding onto my shoulders. Felt this lovely warmth, all this love. And she looked up and she started laughing and smiling above my head. And then I could feel this person move around the side. And she turned and smiled. And I was like, Granddad, is that you? Is that you? Oh my gosh, you're here. Like, it was so lovely. It was so beautiful. And all this warmth and love. And it was the most oh, gratifying feeling I've ever had. I don't know if any of you have had that. Let me know if you have. It was gorgeous. And she was looking at him. And with such love in her eyes, it was, oh, it was amazing. And then the doorbell rang and it was my mom. So I grabbed her off the mat and ran downstairs with half a nappy on. I was like, mom, granddad's here, quick run upstairs. And she's like, you what? What, have you had any sleep? I was like, no, quick, run, run, run. And ran upstairs and I said, oh, he's gone. I couldn't feel him. I was like, he's gone. I said, you've scared him. And she's like, I haven't scared him. She says, he's been with me as well. He's been with me and yeah, and he's been there, you know, looking after me as well. So I felt him. I asked him to come and see the baby. So that's probably why he has. And I was like, oh my God, he's been, he's been. So it was really, it was a real beautiful, beautiful experience. And I said to Mr. H, if something is that gorgeous, that feeling, and if something is that powerful to look after you in your time of need, how can I ever be scared of anything? Like, really, how can you? If something's there, so I want you all to think about that. If something is there for you in your time of need, and if spirit come to meet you and your loved ones when your time is up, how can that be scary? How can that be daunting? How can that be fearful? It's the most beautiful thing ever. It's wonderful. So that was it. I was like, right, you know what? I'm going to learn about this gift. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to spend time developing. And if nothing comes of it, nothing comes of it. But I'm going to learn. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And I remember saying to my friend, she was saying, uh, she's, what's going on with you? And I said, I'm meant for big things. I said, I can't describe it to you, but I'm meant for big things. And she said, I believe you, you are. You're definitely meant for big things. And I said, so I don't know what it is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm supposed to do something that's empowering to help others. But I don't know what that is. What do I do? I was just literally, I don't know. I just felt this surge, this surge of power and this love and this this thing that I was meant for more. Does anyone else get that? Does anyone else get this feeling that they're meant for more? It was just like a pull and a calling. And I knew that, and this is the, the also thing that I think is really powerful for you all. When you've got a loved one that's crossed over, so if you think about anyone that's got a loved one that's crossed over, you can use them as your spirit guide. So they can be your guides. So actually, it's the most beautiful thing ever and it was the first time that I started to connect to spirit and felt safe because I knew I could call my granddad in as my guide, like I knew it. So I thought if I can link in with my granddad and eradicate that fear of all those childhood visits where I haven't got a clue who was there, could have been anyone. And all of those things that scared me because of the lack of understanding. And if I think back to that time now, what was the worst thing they were doing? They were standing by my bed, they were smiling, they were talking to me, yes, but it wasn't all daunting. It wasn't all scary. Someone's coming. Um, so I just thought, you know what? It can't be that bad. It can't be. And I'm going to understand it, take the time. I'm going to help other people with it. But I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I just knew I was going to do something. And that's where I started. So I went to a spiritualist church and thought that was it. I'd made it. I was going to develop. I was going to be on the stage. They were going to embrace me. They were going to love me. I was going to learn so much. I was going to be so inspirational, help so many all around the world. But it didn't quite go to plan. It didn't quite end up that way. So my darlings, I'm going to announce a winner. 
a winner now. Let me just go and get the prize and then I'm gonna have- I love you all, enjoy the rest of your night. Big kisses, big love.